almost produced the Son of God standing among them in the breezes to wave away the heat wave. But not until they went into the fire did that comforter appear. It was Daniel who had purposed in his heart that he had not defiled himself with the things of the world. I was forced to a trial, whether he had prayed to God or go to a lion's den. But it was after the heat was put on and he was thrown into a lion's den that after that he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the midst of him. Keeping away that great pillar of fire standing between him and the lion. And the lions could not get him because he had went through the trials and temptations Amen. and troubles. He knew that his God was able to deliver him from oh, them. Hallelujah. It was Abraham after he had seen the ground get barren and the drought come and Lot separate himself and go down to live deliciously into the world. It was after he had heard the whines and cries of of his herdsmen for no grass for his cattle. But he maintained in the land that God gave him and told him to sojourn in. Hallelujah. As on that day after he had been tried till his, his patience was at the end. It was on that day that when after the trial was over, he spoke face to face with Elohim. Hallelujah. Under the oak that day. Hallelujah. It was after he had suffered his trials after he had went through the troubles that he had been through, that God appeared to him in the form of a man and sat there and told him he was married and his wife's name was Sarah and said she laughed at him in the tent behind. It was there that Abraham called him Elohim. Yes, right after the trial and tribulation, right oh, if the church could only wake to itself oh, today to find that after the troubles and trials and laughs and made fun of, the things the church has been through, the Pentecostal church, yes. that we see God in our midst yes. doing great signs and wonders. Amen. Praise after you. the toils and troubles of day, after it's all past, then we shall see Jesus at last. Hallelujah. He will be waiting for me. Jesus so fair and true. On his beautiful throne, he will welcome us home after the day is through. While it's day, let us labor. All of these great men that would take much of our morning service away to go in to mention that they went through trials and saw God. They went through trials and saw angels. They went through trials and revelations and saw signs and wonders and things. But, oh, none of them saw what Job saw. All them men after seeing angels and seeing God and all these things, they never saw nothing to give them hopes beyond the grave. But Job saw the resurrection. He saw Easter. He saw the thing that comforts every heart. Amen. Then when he did, oh, that my words would be printed in a book, all oh, that they would be engraved with an iron pen in the rock. See, it, everything had turned against him. His, even his servants wouldn't speak to him. His wife was a stranger. There he sat on the ash heap. That great trial in the church come and turned their back to him for seven days and no one to comfort him. Then he must have saw the vision of Easter when he cried, I know my Redeemer liveth and the last days he'll stand on the earth. Praise the Lord. I know, oh, that my words were pinned with an iron pin and a stone, that my words could never fade no more, for I know my Redeemer liveth. I know, I know. What do you know, Job? I know my Redeemer liveth. Did you notice? Not only was there someone living, but he was a Redeemer to Job. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm so glad that I'm part of Easter. That I'm part of that resurrection. And we are part of it this morning because in us dwells that resurrection life that is the partaker that brought Easter. 
I know Amen. that my Redeemer. What do you know? I'm not guessing at it. We got too much guessing today. Amen. I know my Redeemer liveth. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, what was he? If he lived, he was a Redeemer to Job. My person. My. My Redeemer liveth. And what else do you know, Job? What did you see in that vision? And at the last days he shall stand on the earth. And though the skin worms destroys my body, yet in my flesh I shall Amen. see God as I shall see for myself. I know my Redeemer liveth, and he will stand at the last day upon the earth. Though my reins be consumed within me, though the skin worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Dude, that was the greatest vision. Daniel saw an angel. The Hebrew children saw the Son of God. Amen. Noah saw the rainbow. Abraham seen God face to face. But Job saw the resurrection. Job looked forward, all the patriarchs and great saints of the Bible looked forward to that day with an assurance through their vision, through their revelations, that there would come a time of resurrection. Now, we see great works go on. We see great powers of God. We see great things that he could do. You couldn't look at the sun and, and know that it isn't the power of God that brings that world around over that sun. You couldn't see a springtime come without knowing there was a God. You can see healing of blind eyes, deaf ears, know it's God. But well, what if that was all there was? And after we died, we were gone. But the resurrection, the Easter, Amen. oh, that's what sealed everything that God ever promised was a resurrection. Amen. And they had to have a crucifixion before you can have a resurrection. Amen. And before the church will ever be able to see a resurrected power, before I can ever see a new ministry take place myself, before you can ever enter into a new fellowship with God, there's got to be a self-crucifixion so that there can come a resurrection. Amen. Help us, Lord. We've got to die out to our own thoughts, die out to our own ways, Amen. die out to everything that's around us, yes. go through the trials and tribulations that we might see a new resurrection, Amen. a new life. Amen. Before a sinner can ever become a Christian, there has to come a death, then a resurrection. Yes. Amen. Before Abraham could see Elohim, there had to be 25 years of testing. Before the Hebrew children could see the Son of God, they had to go into a fiery furnace. Before Daniel could see an angel, he had to go into the lion's den. Amen. Before Job could ever see the resurrection, he had to go in and lose everything he had. Amen. But then by vision he saw, if Job by vision could stand so Amen. firmly upon a promise, how much more ought we to do after Christ is raised from the dead and become the first fruits of those that slept and sent back the Holy Spirit as a seal of promise upon us that we too shall live because I live, you live also. Hallelujah. Seeing his great presence among us, working, doing the same signs and wonders that he did on earth, giving us a hopes, and we come to the resurrection and then remain on our ash heaps. Let's get off the ash sheep today with a new vision, with a new power, with a new determination that Amen. we see God in his power. We see the resurrection of the things coming. We're at the time of death. We're setting in the doors of death. The nations is in the doors of death. Russia has discovered a new weapon now, as you all heard on the radio and things. They don't have to come over here and blow it up with a bomb. They can just bring a little something over here, get it amongst their spies and spurt a little stuff out in a nation, and everybody will be paralyzed for 24 hours. Come over, and when you wake up, there's a Russian kicking you to the side, a big Russian guard taking over your home, ravishing your wife, throwing your children out in the street, and taking your home. They can do it. They wouldn't lose one thing. They got it. Nobody knows what it is. See, everything working up in Now they can use that and not be afraid of it because no one else has it. We don't know how it will come, what will take place. But we know one thing, that we're on the ash heap. Yes. The nation's on the ash heap. Amen. The world's on the ash heap. And because the world is on an ash heap, I'm so glad that the Spirit of God can come and we can say, I know my Redeemer liveth and at the last day. He'll stand upon the earth. Amen. One day he will come. 
No one of the poet wrote, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. Someday he's coming, oh glorious day. Amen. It's taken a Gethsemane of drops of blood breaking through his skin before that I had taken a cruel agony of Calvary before that could come of the proof of an eternal God who could raise the dead up. It taken a it taken a Gethsemane and a Calvary to make an Easter. It certainly did. How those apostles upon that morning when they were so discouraged until Peter said, I am so discouraged, I believe I'll just go back a fishing again. I'll go back down. I, I've seen him. They had great hopes and believed in everything until it come that great darkening place. What was God doing? He was bringing those apostles to an ash heap. He was bringing them to a place to where they would, they would have their faith confirmed to them. And Peter said, I'm, I've seen do great miracles down on Galilee. But oh, we ladies yonder dead and cold in the tomb. I believe I'll just go down to the sea this morning and cast in a net. And just go fishing. Maybe I can look out across the sea, Hunter, and I'll find out. I remember seeing him when he waited for us at the bank. I believe I'll just go down. The apostle said, you know what? I believe I'll just go with you. Oh, they were blue. They cried until their eyes were swollen. How we know to go through those places? How we know we're all acquainted with those things? I remember when I laid a precious one, Hunter, in the grave up on top of the hill, Hunter, called the Easter or the Walnut Ridge Cemetery. I laid a little baby in there, and I'd cry on a mother's arm. So I'd cry till I couldn't cry no more. I'd done everything that I know till I took a gun to try to commit suicide. I was in such a time. It was at that hour in that little room up there on my knees that the heavens opened back. My stars standing there. Emma. In the splendor of immortality. Praise God. It was in that hour that I felt her arms come around my shoulder and said, Bill, you don't understand we're so much better off than you. See, it takes a crucifixion. It takes a crushing of a flower to bring perfume from it. It takes a crushing of a life to get the best out of it that there is. That's the reason Jesus had to be crushed to bring forth what he was. He could not stand before the crucifixion and say, All power in heavens and earth is given in my hands. But after the crucifixion, he could stand and say, All power in heavens and earth is given into my hands. But what did it do? It taken crucifixion first. It taken the crushing and the disappointing of the apostles. It seen their Savior, the one they had loved, and seen him even raise up the dead from the, from the grave. They seen him do that and then think there he lays cold in the grave himself this morning. It taken uh, those people who had seen him open the eyes of the blind, seen him stand and perceive the very thoughts that was in the people's hearts. How didn't he know they'd say that them were coming after him? How did he know? Why didn't he know Judas, Judas would, would betray him? Why didn't he know the soldiers were coming up the mountains there with staves and swords and everything to get him if he could perceive their thoughts? See, the devil was working on them, putting them on an ash heap. For they wanted to give him a testimony of I know. Not I guess or perhaps it's so. I know. Amen. I know. And remember, those trials are brought up on you the same way so that you might say, well, maybe this is right. Maybe the scripture's true. Maybe divine healing's right. Maybe the Holy Ghost is right. But when you get that experience and come off that ash sheet and you get the revelation of God by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can scream, I know my Redeemer liveth because he lives in me. Peter said, I'll go fishing. The apostle said, I believe I'll just go with you. And there was on their ash sheep, down there in the midst of the sea, in the trouble going on the way it was. And I can hear one of them say, oh, how could it happen, Peter? How could it be such a thing that a man like that could die? How could he be put into the grave the way he was? How could he stand and let him spit in his face and jerk beard out, put that crown on his head? How could he do that? Oh, and still be God. I just can't understand it. Oh, what a disappointment. All of a sudden, they looked over on the bank. Just the same kind of a revelation that Job got. There they seen what Job seen 4,000 years before. There stood the Redeemer alive and fresh. Standing on the bank with a fire made and fish cooked on it like that. And said, invite him. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. 
With his manna he does feed and supplies our every need. Oh, it is sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Amen. How we can think that, how they have taken those great things, how they, the Paul the apostle, that great apostle who had been through his time of trouble when he witnessed the death of Stephen's and seen his little face look towards heaven and the rocks beating him in the face and he looked up and he said, I see the heavens open. I see Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He said, Lord, lay out this sin to their charge. And Paul holding the coach that had put him for weeks after weeks upon the ash heap, walking back and forth till his mind had been polluted until he was on his road down to Damascus to try to fight a way out like a man going to a whiskey bottle to try to drown his sorrows. He was in the midst of that when there come a voice from heaven. The great shining light said, Saul, Saul, I persecute us, I'll be. He saw him. He recognized him that he was a resurrected Jesus, the one that he had witnessed of dying was raised again. Oh, I can remember my own life on the road down to destruction when I heard a sweet voice, I am Jesus. I was once dead. I'm alive forevermore. Because I live, you can live also. Since that time, put my hand in his. I've trusted him through the dark places. When the times come where I can't see which way I'm going, I still trust him. Amen. Every Christian believer has to be pushed into those trials. Every Christian believer has to be put on the ash heap so that he can come forth with an experience. Amen. I know my Redeemer liveth. We don't come here this morning just to sit and talk about some historical affair, which is all true. But we come here with a testimony this morning. I know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. I know it beyond any shadow of doubt. I know that he raised from the dead and he lives within me today. He is mine and I am his. I am a joint heir with him in the kingdom of Amen. God. Easter. Easter brings a great thing, a resurrection, a new hope. Have you got it this morning? Is it in your heart? Do you know that your Redeemer liveth and he makes all things work together? You say, Brother Branham, I'm sitting here waiting for the prayer line. God's working that just exactly for the good. Why was that precious little boy the other day stricken blind when he was born that God might get glory and turn a city upside down? Sure. God knows what he's doing. God knows and he puts us on the ash heap in order to show us his glory. Amen. So this morning I say this, friend. After 31 years of ministry, after 31 years of toils of the fields, I want to make my testimony to this. I've seen disappointments. I've seen the time I've asked for things and cried for things and begged for things and failed to get them. But if I'll just wait patiently upon God, then I know that it works just exactly right, comes out just exactly right, does just exactly the right thing. When I lost my baby, my little Sharon, that's one thing that stumbled me. I said, how can that be for the good? How can it be for the good? And months later, when I seen her stand there in all the beauty of a young girl, speaking to me, standing beside that old wagon broken down there, I noticed she lived. She might have turned out wrong. God had to take her while she was tender and sweet. I know I'll see her again. I know I shall see her. I know it beyond any shadow of doubt. I think of my wife of 22 years old taking just merely a girl, a little mother there when the papers give a headline here, a young mother, reverendist, dies. Oh, I, my heart bled. I didn't know what to do, but today I know it was all working for my good. I know the life had to be ground, twisted, and squeezed to get what in it was out. There was too much Branham in there. I had to be squeezed out before God could make himself known. There was too much of you and you till God had to squeeze it out through trials. Yeah. And while that squeezing was coming on, it's hard, but after a while the skies clear back and you see the purpose of God. And yeah. you cry, I know my Redeemer liveth. And at the last days he'll stand on the earth. Though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. These little trials and things are just for a moment. They fade and pass away, but they're only done for your good. Let us remember that, that God would get glory. Shall we bow our heads just a moment? I want to ask before prayer, is there any here would like to be remembered in a word of prayer before we uh, close? God bless you. How many in here would say, I want God in the hour of my trial now to give to me a new experience that I can come forth new again? Raise your hand. Say, I want, I want this to be a resurrection for me, an Easter, to resurrect me and new hopes, new powers, new health, and... New joy. 
Lord bless you, my dear people. Oh, our God and our Savior, we are so grateful to thee for this Easter, for what it means to our hearts. And by faith, over yonder, across the land, we can see the coming of the Lord Jesus as he's making himself ready now, putting on his kingly garments. And the church is putting on the bridegroom, putting on her yes. wedding gown. There's fixing to be a great meeting pretty soon. Yes. This ash sheep can't stand forever. When we're hearing people laughing, making fun of us, and calling us that scandalous name of holy rollers and making fun of us and say that we're not even mentally right. Oh, it can't last all the time, Lord. But let us be as Job, hold our testimony. Let us be as Daniel at the lion's den or the Hebrew children at the fire furnace or Abraham in his journey. Help us, O oh Lord, to stand true until we see that great thing take place when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. We which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Then will come that Easter for us that Christ enjoyed some 1,900 years ago this morning and said, Because I live, you live also. This same Jesus that was taken up from the midst of us shall come back just the way he went. We shall see him, even every scar in his hand and every thorn print on his head. We shall see him. Oh, I shall know him. I shall know him. And redeemed by his side, I shall stand. Yes, Lord, my poor heart as it, this feeble body of mine begins to bend beneath the load. The cares and toils of the harvest field, the mission fields and the ups and downs and the indifference between arrogant ministers and so forth across the place and the people scorning and evil powers. But, oh, Lord, someday we're coming like Elijah down to the river. Amen. Look over there, harness to every bush, a chair, and a fire that'll pack us away. Let us know that these ash heaps are only veils to hide us from that great thing that just lays ahead, that great glory. May we remain true like Job until we can see him face to face. May we be as true as our Lord was as our example to go to Calvary to ready to be crucified and to be crucified with him that there might be a resurrection in our life. Grant it, Lord. May, if there be any scorners here that was like Paul of old that's made fun, may they find a Easter on their road home this morning. Grant it, Lord. We pray, Lord, that those that are on the ash heap of destruction, ash heap of sickness, that this will be the hour that they will be delivered. Last night, speaking to that little woman out at the trailer, yeah. her husband, how that yonder in Phoenix, in a serious condition, those big cancers laying up there on them, and now today is perfectly well and normal. And the little baby that was going to have his heart taken out sits here in the building this morning. Normal, well. A little blind boy that once walked in the darkness and never see daylight walks today and sees the light of day. And oh, God, how we thank you for this. And it's all looking beyond the veil to that great day of resurrection. Granted, Father, let them know that these things had to be that way, that these little blind boy could see, that the little child having heart trouble might give a testimony to others. All these things work around together for good to them that Amen. love you. All made possible to us because there was one obedient in trial. There was one who stood the test. That was Jesus. The one who was so obedient to the Father, till the Father raised him up on Easter morning because it was not possible that he should be holding of death. For I will not suffer my holy one to see corruption, neither will I leave his soul in hell. For he was found faithful, always doing that which pleased the Father. God, may we ever be faithful at the post of duty. No matter what our trials is and our troubles, what are they, may we be able to say always, I know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. Granted, Father, we bless these people this morning with our blessings. They've come early from their places. They've come to the tabernacle. They've come to get comfort. May they go home this morning with the power of the Holy Ghost burning in their hearts, walking along the road like those coming from Emmaus said, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? Grant it, Father. I commit them to thee now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
All right, Brother Neville. Now remember the services. We won't have prayer cards this morning because that if we have prayer cards, as long as I get them people stand here like that, I'll still rely upon that gift. I've got to have a place to lay that aside where I can walk out here. and I'm afraid. I seem to be scared. And I'm afraid I'll make a mistake. <laughs> to lose a battle is not lose a war. Patton lost several battles, but he never lost a war. That's right. And we'll lose lots of battles, too, but we'll not lose a war. I'll make many mistakes, but I won't lose the cause. God gave it, and God will take care of it. It's, a, it's anointing, and I, it's time. I believe the hour is, and I'm beginning being this Easter, this day. I'm going to go on like I did there, praying for the sick. And if I can... It's anointing. It's something has to happen within me. I'm not too used to it. It comes in such a way I maybe not be able to detect it just right, but I've got to keep going at it until I do know it every time. So this will be the day that I'll try by the grace of God. The Lord bless you now. Brother Neville, and the services will begin at 9.30.